Um, no, I think everyone's just sort of been open and uh, agile. We, we've known what this season's going to provide. You know, we played round one and then the season got called off. So um, it's just preparing for you know whatever whatever happens. Like our fixtures being changed this week, so our, sh our focus shifts straight to Richmond. Um, but you know, by the end of next week, we could be playing someone else as well. So uh, it is an uncertainty that we all know, but we're all starting to get used to um, being uncomfortable. You know, being in these uncomfortable situations. Yeah, I think that's more of an individual basis. Um, some players, you know, really wouldn't be able to because of for those reasons, and um, a lot of other players, um, you know, probably more prepared to go into hubs. Um, so that, that's just the reality of the season. Um, you know, I think, you know, from my point of view, like I, I'm, you know, I'm in a, I don't have kids or anything like that, so um, I, I don't really, you know, have those those um, challenges in front of me. Um, I'm just sort of prepared to try and get this season going and get as many games as we can in, and um, however that may look, you know. The, We've got the AFL and um, the governments all working together to find out the you know the best practice for that. But certainly, I I, I can't speak for every player who's had kids or in, in a tough situation at home and um, say that they have to come on. I'm, I'm sure everyone has um, their own reasons. I oh, know it's only sort of sort of freshish news sort of over the last 24 hours. But have you talked much about it as a playing group yet, or not not had the chance? Ah, uh, no, nah, because um, we had uh, yesterday we just had recovery in the morning and then um, the rest of the day off. So um, this is our first day back in. Um, preparing for the game, so yeah, no one's really had a chance to talk about it or, or ask questions. Um, and that, as we saw, I think it was on uh, um, so, uh, Monday, maybe our game got changed, um, and we all didn't know about that. And some players didn't even know until until we started chatting on on the WhatsApp. So um, it is a it is a strange season, but um, everything's sort of expected now. You mentioned you know there might be some players who can't go. That'd be okay with you guys. I mean, the na nature of the season is it might be that some of your best players might not be able to go, but you're okay with that. Oh, definitely. Um, we, you know, I'm not in a position to tell people who can and can't go and what's important to them and what's not. You know, it might not just be kids. It might have sick family members. It could be all sorts of reasons. Um, with the COVID stuff, they could be worried about that. There's, there's a range of reasons, and I can't sit here and say um, that's not good enough for you to come on the hub. You know, um, and that's not just in the hub. During the season, players miss games and personal issues and leave. So, um, it's just one of those. Although, you know, it's, it's a bit more highlighted this year because you know the hub is or could be in place. Um, for the Victorian teams, but like I said, um, I can't I can't speak for those players. And if, if some of my teammates were strongly against or really felt that they needed to stay home um, for whatever reason, um, I'd support that. Steve, do you have any preference at all of where you would like to go if you do have to travel? Ah, uh, somewhere sunny. <laughs> um, no, nah, it's been pretty cold in Melbourne. Um, I think it sort of um, has something to do with how many teams we've played as well, like maybe the Perth teams or the SA teams who haven't played those, so that could be an option. Like I said, I'm, I'm just a player at the moment, I don't really know what's going on, um, I don't know what meetings are happening right now. Um, all I know is I'm prepared to, to go and play and I'm sure there's a lot of players around the league who are and there's going to be a small amount who can't for whatever reason and we just got to respect that and it's a strange season so just be expected. Steve, just the, the other thing is obviously the, the lack of real true um, matches for the guys who aren't playing every week as well and the limits of training and that sort of thing. Are you feeling or seeing a real impact on the footy with everything that's happened? Um, in terms of the fitness and stuff, the guys playing in the res um, reserves game are actually doing a lot more work. They're playing 15 a side or 14 a side. Um, they're running more distance, playing more game time. So they're fit and ready to go whenever they get an opportunity. Um, I'm not gonna. That's not a reason for the poor football um, that's been on display, and, and certainly ours. Some basics that we've just been stuffing up week to week, and um, not being able to adjust to teams doing certain things during a game. Um, that's our fault, you know. Like that's that's not nothing to do with the strange prep or anything like that. We were we'll, we'll, we were well prepared for Essendon, and we're certainly prepared for Geelong, and they they changed their tactics a bit at the MCG, and um, you know they won by three points. It was a, you know, it wasn't a good game to watch, no doubt, but um, it was a tactical game. It was like a game of chess and um, ended up getting the points. But we'll certainly prepare for Richmond and, and every um, scenario they could throw at us. You'd probably expect Richmond to play a fairly different game to Geelong, given Richmond's historical sense of ballistic footy, as opposed to Geelong last week playing that real defensive, keeping dog thing. Is that hard to sort of go from one to the other in the space of a week? 
Um, <laughs> it's it's not hard. I suppose we get we get used to that as um a, you know as professional athletes we prepare and we do a lot we do as much in the film room as we do out on the oval in terms of preparing. So um, Richmond are a ballistic team. They've and they've been very good at it. Um, they're hard to stop when they get through, but they also got opportunities when you do get a turnover to score against them. Um, the teams that hold the ball a long time they starve your possession. It's hard to get the ball back and get tired of defending for you know five minutes at a time. But um, like I said, Richmond are very potent going forward. Um, coming through the corridor. Um, if we can take that away, it'll give us a chance to win. And, and if, if we don't, um, it's going to make it hard. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I'll go again. What's the feedback been among your group? Obviously, you had the one week off where you didn't get to play, and then you play that game where it was, as you say, hard to sort of get into the game. What's the feel of where you guys are at with your footy? <clears throat> yeah, we missed the game. Um, it would have been good to get some continuity again, and um, you know, after only playing maybe two games in a few months. So, um, but that wasn't an excuse for our, you know, for our performance. That was just, that was just, un, you know, being unlucky, I suppose. Um, we've sort of been involved in, a, in a, in a COVID sort of um, disruption this, this whole season, and you know, I think our coaching staff have told us that was a real possibility. So, boys aren't, um, you know, getting too pissed off or anything about that. It's just the way that it is. Um, but yeah, just, we got some basic things to work on, like missing targets inside 50, and um, you know, little things in the back line, spoiling when you should, mark when you should. Like it's just they're um, you know the very basic skills that are costing us you know a few points. And, and as you can see this season, there's a lot of games have been tight, so those little basic skill errors are going to be huge. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm really passionate and a bit, um, you know, I, I'll get right into it a bit. And, um, and, you know, as my teammates have said, and at my past club, you know, they love that about me, but it also can be my flaw sometimes. Um, so I'm just working on how I do that. A lot of I, my animations with my face and that looks like I'm angry, but I'm actually just like trying to talk. And um, some people do think I'm coming across as, you know, being a bit aggro, but I've worked a lot on that and how I, how I deliver my feedback and that. And I was actually one of the more positive guys on the weekend because there's a f there's a few guys arguing, um, you know, as every game happens, um, and I was trying to hold the peace. But yeah, I suppose the cameras just catch my, um, you know, my frowns and you know my, my body language. So, you know, it may not look like that, but um, certainly I haven't had any feedback saying you've been too too hard or anything like that. They've actually been saying they've loved me being passionate, um, and that's you know that's why I came to the football club to try and a bit of a hard edge, a bit of passion down back, and you know try and steer the ship a bit better. Yeah, um, after the game, I was talking to um, Michael Hibbert about one of the entries, like how we could have could have squared it up, and that. Well, and someone said that I think it might have been his wife said it was um, was Maisie yelling at you after the game, but I was actually having just a conversation with him um, about another scenario, and someone else took it as I was going off at him, and I thought he played really well, and <laughs> I was actually told him that. But that's what I mean. The cameras only only say certain, uh, you know, only paint so much of a picture, and um, unless I was mic'd up, you wouldn't really know, I suppose. <laughs> All right, Maisie. All good. Andy Let's it. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. No worries, guys. Thank you. <laughs>